each and every one of us have have great, wonderful ancestry. Each and every one of us in this room are tribal people. Sometimes, somewhere back. We've forgotten that. But each and every one of us have a heritage that we should all be very proud of. And we have many good things in our cultures that we have to come together to share. Now, we were told in you know, one of our teachings a long time ago was that there were, there were four couples, a black couple, a red couple, a white couple, and a yellow couple who were created. And they were all brought together by the Creator. And He gave them each a special gift. And they were to go their separate ways and develop these gifts that they were given individually. And they were to come back together at a time in the future. And when they came back together, they were to share these gifts and they would create a new world when they shared these gifts. And you know, to the white couple was given the gift of fire. And when you think about it, look around on all of the things that, that have been created and invented deal with fire like the electric light, like the combustion engine, like all of these things are really the manifestations of the fire. Interestingly enough, the black couple was given the gift of water. I think it's ironic that the water of life that was created, plasma for instance, was discovered by a black man. To the yellow couple was given the gift of air. And we know that they developed this gift of, of breath, of breathing, meditation, all of these things. They developed it to a very high art, to a very high standard. To the red couple was given the gift of the earth, to protect the earth, to be keepers of the earth. And that's a gift that we have, that we now must all share. You know, we've gone beyond the stage where we can say, ha ha, you're in, the boat is sinking. We're all in the same boat together. <laughs> this boat, planet Earth. And I did a, a, a film on the Alkali Lake Indian people called The Honor of All. I don't know who, who all has seen it or not, but I, I bring it up only because I think that the most exciting aspect of this film, it's about the Akwai Lake Indian band, the Shushwa people in British Columbia, who went from being 100% alcoholic, men, women, and children, to being 95% sober in 14 years' time. And how this began, it began with a seven-year-old girl, a seven-year-old child, who said enough is enough. When her parents came to pick her up at her grandmother's house, they were drunk and had been drinking, and she said, I, I, I'm not coming back home with you, and I will never come back home until you quit drinking. Seven-year-old girl, and it blew her parents away. <laughs> she said, I hate you, and I, I hate you what, for what you're doing. And she stood firm. The mother, Phyllis Chelsea, quit drinking. A week later, Andy, her husband, quit drinking. And for two years, those were the only two sober people on that reserve. And they withstood everything. I mean, every uh, they were their children were were beaten up at school. Uh, they were threatened. They were cajoled. Anything to try to get them to drink again. All these things happened. Uh, there was an AA counselor, drug counselor from Williams Lake who had spent a great deal of time coming into the community trying to get an AA group started there. Whenever he went, the people would disappear. Nobody would answer the doors. He was never invited in anywhere. But he went to he'd go to the health office and show films, but he would be the only one there that would see the films. This had been going on for years. Phyllis invited him in and they started an AA group with the three of them. Phyllis and Andy and, and uh, Brother Ed Lynch. And they transformed this area. When I went up there to do pre-production for the film, I took my 10-year-old, my son was 10 at the time, 
He's uh, going to be 15 on Sunday. Uh, as we came down over the hill to come into the valley where, where the Aqua Lake community is, he said, and he didn't really know much about what we were doing. We were going to go make a film, he knew that. And it was about the Alkali people, but he didn't really know or understand what we were doing. But all of a sudden, he looked at me and he said, Dad, he said, he said, these people are really different, aren't they? I looked at him and I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, they're, he said, they're very special here. And I said, yeah, they are. Well, oh, he says, I, can, I, I feel it. And you know, it's true. It changed the atmosphere of that entire area. And you can't go there and not be affected by it. And this is the power that we all have. When we exemplify, when we internalize the teachings of Baha'u'llah, and when we walk the road, and when we walk our talk, you know, it's one thing to say we're Baha'is, but when we walk our talk, and we walk our talk 100% of the time, then we become that magnet that attracts hearts. Not, not this, hearts. That special place that Baha'u'llah has reserved for himself only, this thing. We attract the hearts. And it's the power of what one person can do. And that's what I love about this film. It's what one person did. It started with one person. Not a committee, not a group, not a hundred thousand people. They didn't have government grants. They didn't have anything. They had no money and no help. Just one person who said, I'm going to be strong and I'm going to do it. And they did it. And they transformed this whole region. And their entire nation was transformed. And that's the power that's available. We have a whole concourse on high. The concourse on high made up of every holy soul that has ever lived on this planet who would have given up their, according to the writings, would have given up their place of honor at the holy throne of God to have been able to spend one moment in the day in which we're living today. To spend one moment in the day in which we're living today. They would have given up everything to be where we are today. And they're anxious to help us. And we're told that in the writings. You know, when, we go, when I go into the sweat lodge, that's what we do. We call the concourse on high. And we say, help us. Because they're anxious to help us, and they will help us. There is that connection that we have. And one person, each and every one of us, have the power to transform this earth. And I'm not just making that up. Baha'u'llah said that. Abdul Baha said, if we could find one soul who is truly on fire with the faith, it would spread like wildfire. Which one of us will it be? We all have that potential. And we also all have the obligation. And I didn't talk about what we said today, but I love you. <laughs>